in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John said to one another, Who can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. To worship God and to love our neighbor. And this very church exists. Take this all to its heart and eat so we can gather around. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Mass today, too, and a warm welcome to those who are visiting us here at St. John's for the first time. It's great to have you with us. That first hymn is a great reminder that being close to God is the most powerful experience in our lives. And when we become distant from him, often that's when things can start to fall apart. As we begin our Mass today, knowing that Christ is truly beside us, we open our hearts to him and seek forgiveness when we have distanced ourselves from him. I confess to Almighty God, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Amos. The Almighty Lord says this, Woe to those ensconced so snugly in Zion, and to those who feel so safe on the mountain of Samaria. Lying on ivory beds and sprawling on their divans, they dine on lambs from the flock and stall fat and veal. They bawl to the sound of the harp. They invent new instruments of music like David. They drink wine by the bowlful and use the finest oil for anointing themselves. But about the ruin of Joseph, they do not care at all. That is why they will be the first to be exiled. The sprawler's revelry is over. The word of the Lord. My soul give praise, praise to the Lord. My soul give praise, praise to the Lord. My soul give praise, praise to the Lord. My soul give praise. It is the Lord who keeps faith forever, who is just to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. My soul give praise, praise to the Lord. My soul give praise, praise to It is the Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are bowed down. It is the Lord who loves the just, the Lord who protects the stranger. My soul give praise, praise to the Lord. My soul give praise, praise to the Lord. He upholds the widow and orphan, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, Zion's God from age to age. My soul give praise, praise to the Lord. 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 A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. 
As a man dedicated to God, you must aim to be saintly and religious, filled with faith and love, patient and gentle. Fight the good fight of the faith and win for yourself the eternal life to which you were called when you made your profession and spoke up for the truth in front of many witnesses. Now, before God, the source of all life, and before Jesus Christ, who spoke up as a witness for the truth in front of Pontius Pilate, I put to you the duty of doing all that you have been told, with no faults or failures, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who at the due time will be revealed by God, the blessed and only ruler of all, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal, whose home is in inaccessible light, whom no man has seen and no man is able to see. To him be honour and everlasting power. Amen. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who used to dress in purple and fine linen and feast magnificently every day. And at his gate there lay a poor man called Lazarus, covered with sores who longed to fill himself with the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even came and licked his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In his torment in Hades, he looked up and saw Abraham a long way up with Lazarus in his bosom. So he cried out, Father, Abraham, pity me and send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. My son, Abraham replied, remember that during your life good things came your way, just as bad things came the way of Lazarus. Now he is being comforted here while you are in agony. But that is not all. Between us and you, a great gulf has been fixed to stop anyone, if he wanted to, crossing from our side to yours, and to stop any crossing from their side to ours. The rich man replied, Father, I beg you then to send Lazarus to my father's house, since I have five brothers, to give them warnings so that they do not come to this place of torment. They have Moses and the prophets, said Abraham. Let them listen to them. Ah, no, Father Abraham, said the rich man. But if someone comes to them from the dead, they will repent. Then Abraham said to him, If they will not 
listen either to Moses or to the prophets. They will not be convinced even if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Even though um, we're all Catholics, I bet if we had a little discussion in small groups about hell, we'd get different opinions. Some people don't think it exists at all because, well, Jesus is so compassionate, how could he send anyone there? And then others have just different opinions of what it's like or who might be there. I do believe in hell. For two reasons. One, as compassionate as he is, Jesus tells us there's a hell. The second reason is, if there's no hell, there's no free choice. We've got to go to heaven. We've got to be with God, even if we don't want to be. That also is impossible. In the gospel today, we hear about one man who is in hell. And in a sense, I think maybe Jesus would never send anyone there. But he wouldn't stop someone going there if they wanted to. And that's precisely what the rich man has done. By distancing himself from Lazarus, this man in poverty at his gates, he has distanced himself from God. It's not like he's been, in, he's been cruel to, to Lazarus, he hasn't kicked him on the way in or thrown things at him or shouted at him. He's just ignored him. George Bernard Shaw once wrote, the worst sin to our fellow creatures is not to hate them, but to be indifferent to them. That's the essence of inhumanity. And in being indifferent to Lazarus, he was being indifferent to God. Because Jesus, time and again, tells us that he's in the poor and the broken and the sick and the prisoner and the homeless. There's no escaping from it. It's one of the truths in the gospel and one of the things by which, maybe not by which we're judged, or by which we judge ourselves by coming close to God or distancing ourselves from him. And that just reminds us that as, as disciples of Jesus, we have a threefold mission. The three things we're called to do is to worship God, our maker, on whom we depend, to bring the good news to others in whatever way we can and to help the poor. They're the three things. Sometimes we're very good at the first as a church. It can be a bit ropey in the evangelization. Maybe on helping the poor, there's a mixed picture too. But if we miss that out, We're missing out. We're tearing out the heart of the gospel. It's essential. Because when we do that, we meet God. There was a a, a missionary in the last century, a pastor called Louis Evans, and he went to Korea once to visit one of their outposts. And there was a surgeon working there who was also on a sort of mission working abroad. 
And this pastor watched the surgeon operating on an eight-year-old child for hours in, like, poor conditions. And when the operation was finished, he was just sort of worn out. And the pastor went for a walk with him and said, tell me, if you were back home, how much would you have earned for that operation? The surgeon said, maybe 500 pounds. This was a long time ago. The pastor said to him, well, what did you get paid for that today? He said, a few cents and a smile from God. And then the surgeon looked at him and put his hand on his shoulder and said, but I'll tell you what, this is living. And that's the thing about helping those in need cannot be a burden or a chore because we're meeting God. And we discover in that moment that actually heaven has begun for us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us make our needs known to the Lord. For those followers of Christ who support the poor and needy, that they may receive their just reward from our God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our world leaders, that they may work tirelessly to end conflict and bring peace particularly from the suffering people of Ukraine. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Father Hudson's care, that their work in helping people in need throughout the diocese may be blessed by God and supported by the people of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the people in our community who are sick, that the Lord may raise them up. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have died recently, especially Marston Bradford, Edith Hunt, and Andre Mosden, that they may come into the light of God's presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us ask Our Lady to bring our prayers before the presence of the Father. Hail, Hail Mary. Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make our private petitions in silence to God our Father. Please remember among your prayers to Ruth Foles, who is critically ill at this time. Eternal God, you give wisdom to those who rely on you. 
Send us the grace we need each day, we beseech you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father in heaven, bless all those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Open your eyes to their who needs so that we can help them in whatever way we can. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. This morning's Mass is being offered for Queen Elizabeth. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, and all the hosts of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please sit down for a moment now, if you would. We've got some of our altar servers are receiving their St. Stephen's Guild medal today, so they're going to come forward and go down one step. Young John isn't just yet because he's got a little bit more to do. And Marta, this is her first time serving. So, so if you face this way now, guys, that's great. If you go down there, Adam, good lad, and face me. Well done. Well done. So. My dear people, let us pray for our children who wish to be enrolled into the Guild of St. Stephen. Let us ask God to bless them. Heavenly Father, bless these servers who have been chosen to be members of the Guild of St. Stephen. Grant that they may be faithful in their service at your altar, and they may grow in faith and love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we ask God's blessing on these medals. Blessed are you, Lord of all creation, we ask you to bless these medals which your servers will wear as a sign of their service at your altar. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless you too. <laughs> we we'll see these medals as a sign of your admission into the Guild of St. Stephen, that with the help of his prayers, you may lead a good and holy life. Amen. Well done. Give them a little round of applause. A um, couple of other things. One is the Alpha, our Alpha course is starting soon. That's quite a big thing for us. It's a way where we help people deepen their faith, especially people coming back to the church or coming into the church or people just asking questions. So if you know of anybody or if anyone here is interested, it starts this Thursday um, and it inv involves a meal. So because we cook a meal, we need to know our number. So if anyone is coming along, please let us know, especially Alex or me, so we can adjust those numbers accordingly. We also need some of the first few meals are ready, but if anyone can help cook one of the meals over the next 12 weeks, please let us know. Just, just one of them would be great. So again, speak to Alex or myself about that as well. There's a second retiring collection today for Father Hudson's, and Father Hudson's works with people with dementia, homeless people, people, asylum seekers and refugees, the sort of people like Lazarus really. So do loads of great work. So please be generous if you can uh, to Father Hudson's on the way out. We're also, um, youth groups are both starting up soon. And if anybody feels they could help with the teenagers um, on a Friday night, we'd be really grateful for one or two more volunteers to help Rebecca with them. Final congratulations to Josh over there who completed his 100-mile bike ride yesterday, sponsored by Crime. Just give him a round of applause. <laughs> there are teas and coffees after Mass, and so that's just in there. If anybody wants to go along, so please uh, join other people in there after Mass. We'll stand together now. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God come down upon you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.